You ready, Doug? I'm ready. All right, here we go. I'm, re- I'm ready to receive. Are you surprised Wisconsin bombed out Coach Paul Chris? And was this justifiable? Okay, I'll start with the justifiable part. Really, no. I mean, this guy in seven years had won the Big Ten West three times, had been to New Year's Six games three times. And the, the idea that this slow start, the guy didn't get a chance to recover from it, blows my mind. And I think this might be a firing that they regret. However, I think there's a strategy to it. First of all, if you watch the Wisconsin-Illinois game, it was disturbing how bad Wisconsin was. Their defense coordinator, Jim Leonard, is coveted. And I think they want to see what they've got in that guy. I think they pulled a quick trigger to try and see if Jim Leonard can do better before somebody else hired him away. So they make him the interim coach. The schedule lightens up. They're going to get a chance to get some wins here and get some momentum with Jim Leonard. I think it's a a preserving Jim Leonard at Wisconsin move. I think it's a ridiculous move for them to fire Chris after just a you know, five games in the season. I think it's completely knee jerk to them losing to their former coach, Brett Bielema stings. That's what it was. And Brett Bielema knows what Wisconsin does inside and out because Wisconsin has done the same thing since Barry Alvarez took over, you know, 50 years ago, whatever it was, they do the same thing. So he knows what they're going to do. Wisconsin ran the ball 24 times in the game against Illinois, 24. What would you think? hundred yards rushing. At least. 150. It came up short of that. How about two? (laughs) How about 24 carries for two yards? That's embarrassing. Losing to Bielema was embarrassing, and they went knee-jerk and said, "Let's we got to move on from that. And I know that there's a lot of people aren't happy with it, but I I think it's ridiculous for a guy who's done a pretty good job there. You want to take a look at Jim Leonard? Fine. Fair enough. I I get that and, and go ahead. But the rumors that they're looking at other coaches, I don't know. Yeah, of course it's it's knee jerk, but if you, it's only justifiable if you really are scared of losing Leonard, and I think that's exactly what happened here. Georgia flies real close to the sun on a trip to Missouri this past weekend. They scored two TDs in the last ten minutes to come from behind, from ten down, and win. Is Georgia starting to show some leakage, Gator? Well, it's interesting. I mean, it's forty four points have given up in the last two weeks, and it's not been the most fantastic opposition that you've seen. I mean, this is a Georgia team that went like, what, the first eight games last year, whatever it was, where they didn't give up more than a single touchdown in a game. And now that team was prolific with how good the defense was, but this is a pretty good Georgia team. But 22 to Kent State, 22 to Missouri. Um, I, I think there's some concerns there. But having talked to somebody who might be a big Georgia fan here in the building, mm-hmm. I, I had some discussions with him Uh because he, he watched every play of the game, and uh, he's not happy. Be shocked with this, uh, with, with the way the offense runs. As, as you know, Doug, everybody, every guy thinks they can call plays, drive, and work the grill. This guy not happy with the play calling because he thinks that the Kirby's just being too stubborn and trying to uh, establish a certain uh, way of playing. But I'd be a little bit concerned. Yeah, Georgia has gone from being untouchable to – to just really, really good, which means they're vulnerable. And just like everybody else, you know, they, they can they sort it out? Can they get it sorted out? Yeah. I just don't think you pen them into the college football playoff just yet. It looked like that at the beginning of the year. I just don't think they're there yet. I I see I see concern here because everyone thinks like when you're a big program like Georgia, just reload, right? Just reload. Ohio State, Alabama. Sometimes you can't reload. I don't think Georgia's there at the end. Sometimes you look forward to see what Vegas has to say. They're playing Auburn this week. They're 34. They're 30 point favorites against Auburn. Mm-hmm. So I think Vegas is telling everyone to R E L A X. The B one G is representing scoring D with the top three programs in the country and four of the top six in terms of points allowed so far. Is this a reflection of solid defense, or this is just weak-ass scheduling? So I think it's a reflection of solid defense, and the reason I say that is because weak-ass scheduling is the norm. If you look at Power 5 versus Power 5 games, okay, the Big Ten playing other Power 5 conferences, Big Ten has played 10 of those games. 
The ACC has played 13 of those games. The SEC 11, the Big 12 has played 10, and the Pac-12 has played 8. Weak scheduling is the norm, unfortunately. Now, you can find programs here and there that you can cherry-pick that schedule harder, but everybody's doing this. That's far too few. I think it's watering down the product. Big 10 also has games against Notre Dame and, like, Cincinnati, other good teams. So weak scheduling is the norm. I think it speaks to good defense. Yeah, I, I I will disagree. I think it's just I think it's weak scheduling to this point. Um, the non-conference schedule is a joke with the teams that are ranked that highly right now, and that it's got to change, and and it will change. It'll change drastically now that they're into the uh, the Big Ten schedule. I think you're going to see some more points being flung up there. But when you look at the top and you see Illinois, Minnesota, and Iowa are the top three defenses in in college football all giving up 10 points a game or less. I think you got to do a little deeper dive and recognize that the schedule has been pathetic for, for those schools. Yeah. I mean, I hate to cop out here. I think it is a kind of a combo meal though. I think the defense is strong, but the week you can't ignore the scheduling and, but you're right, Doug, this happens all throughout the country every single year. And then what do we base it on after the first three, four games? We're still saying those top defenses are the top defenses, even though we know they played weak, weak teams. Kansas is five and zero. Rumors are flying. Nebraska and Wisconsin are after their coach. Where will he be coaching next, Lance Leopold? I think he's going to coach at Nebraska. I, I think this is a guy that you know started off uh, coaching at the lower ranks and, and did a hell of a job. Gets an opportunity to take over Kansas and turns that program uh, over. Now they're they're winning games. I know people don't believe in Kansas this year when the five and zero start. And I totally understand it. I totally get it because it's Kansas. You're like, all right, whatever. We'll see when the uh, the other shoe drops here. But um, they got a big game against TCU this weekend, uh, and then it, then it's Oklahoma at Baylor and Oklahoma State, followed by Texas Tech, Texas, and Kansas State. This is when we're going to find out how good Kansas really is. But Leopold's a really good coach, and if you can you can handle things with those Midwest roots right there, that's right in the wheelhouse of 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 recruiting for what Nebraska should be doing. So he's from the state of Wisconsin. He played at Whitewater. He was recruited by Christ. And yet Nebraska was the first in. And next year, Lance Leopold will not be coaching Wisconsin or Nebraska. He's going to be coaching Kansas. He's about to get the Mel Tucker treatment. You got buzzards swirling and they're going to say, no, 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 you're not taking our guy. They are talking about, expanding or replacing their stadium, putting a hotel and conference center on it. Kansas is set to put resources into their football program. Season ticket sales are up. They're about to sell out three games in a row. They got college game day. I don't think they're going to lose the momentum. I think they're keeping Lance Leopold. He's about to get a big deal. If things just don't completely fall apart, I like Nebraska here. I think Kansas puts on the full court press, but I think they ultimately lose them to a traditionally a bigger you know, power – Football, college football school. SMU reports four players have quit the team to enter the portal. Two are confirmed and two are not yet. The two that are confirmed were highly rated recruits. SMU, four games, red shirt, seek to the highest bidder. How do you feel about this, prog- this, this, this type of behavior? Yeah, so they're maintaining that red shirt. In the NIL world, you know exactly they're putting a – for you know, looking for a job say, sign out there to try and, and see who can pay for. The, I hate it. I'm a I'm four player movement, but I don't like bailing midway. I never have. I don't like when coaches do it. I don't like when players do it. There really should be a transfer portal time that you can do it after the season's over. But I I don't like this at all. Well, it doesn't mean they're going to enroll in this school right now. All it means is they're, they're saying they're going to be in the portal and they don't want to waste their eligibility. But they're and, bailing and, on their team. Well, I get that, but if they don't want to be there and if the player I – mean, the football is totally different now, and I, and I get what you're saying. You want to honor commitments and all that, but coaches don't honor commitments and players aren't honoring Sorry. commitments anymore. So it, it's just – it is what it is now. We have to get used to this and – and, and if you're the player, you're looking out for yourself. And and one of the things you're looking out for is to make sure you can maximize your eligibility. And if the coach is thinking about putting you in and you know you're not going to be there, don't do it. I'm not going to be here. Don't do it. I think it's. I think it actually does the coach a solid by letting them know that this is what your intention is. I'm all. You guys know this. I'm all for the you know, the freedom and, and you know the players need to get you know get more out of. They they got to look out for themselves and their families. So I think you got to give them that. 
But as a fan, I hate this, and I just don't like to see it. I'm really torn in the end. You're right, Gator. Maybe it is a doing of the massage. Hey, I'm not going to be here. I just want to give you a heads up, but why give him the option? Maybe you can just take it away and force him to stay, basically, right? Lane Kiffin, 5-0 and at Ole Miss this season. This is his third year with the Rebels. He's never been at a program longer than three and a half seasons. Will Lane Kiffin still be the head coach at Ole Miss three years from now? All right. Full disclosure, it's my question, but I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you love it, too, because this is – I mean, Lane Kiffin has always been the butt of the jokes, right? Like, hey, when's he leaving? Because this is a guy that, you know, he left Tennessee after one season. You know, that was after a couple seasons with the Raiders and goes to USC. And then after th- after the third season, it's like five games into the fourth season and he's fired because of sanctions levied against USC. He's a vagabond. He's been everywhere. But he's got success in the SEC with Ole Miss right now. And what he's doing there, they had a 10-win season last year, starting off 5-0 and this year. I want to think that he's going to be there three years from now, but a track record says absolutely not. And here's why he won't. Lane Kiffin's great at marketing Lane Kiffin, and he's going to use this to market himself and wait for the best job to become available in the next couple years, and he'll take it. There's not a chance he's going to be there in three years. He's recently complained about Ole Miss fans publicly for showing up late to games. It's what he does. There's no way he'll stay there. No way. He just rubs himself... He, he maybe ru- sorry. Full stop. He rubs, <laughs> he rubs people, <laughs> he rubs people raw. Whoa. the wrong way. Full stop. Sorry, <laughs> rubs people the wrong way. God, take three. <laughs> Where's he gonna go? I, I, I just go with the track record. He ain't gonna be there. Right, I mean, right. you just can't, you can't count on so, this. There's no way. You don't bet that way. You bet the other way. So all three of us agree. He's not gonna not be in three years. Where, where is he gonna be in three years? Uh, the job after he takes Nebraska. In three years, he'll take Nebraska for a couple of years and then go somewhere else. I I, I got three letters. N, F, L. I thought it was going to be A, S, U. No, why would you go there? I don't know. Money? You don't leave. He'll get plenty of money at Ole Miss. He he ain't staying at Ole Miss.